Earlier this year, I put together a video talking about geotargeting strategies and how you can leverage those even if your account isn't focused only on a few specific locations. If you're interested in that, you can check out this video right here. But today I want to continue that theme, but I want to do it with ad scheduling or day parting, whichever one you call it. I'm a firm believer that even if your ads are running 24 seven, there's a good amount of information and some optimizations you can get out of ad scheduling if you get a little creative. So in this video, I want to walk you through what ad scheduling settings are when they do and don't help and some strategies for how you can start to leverage them better in your account. Let's start off by finding where ad scheduling lives in the Google ads interface. Since this is a live client account with data, I have a lot of things blurred out, so I'm sorry for that but you'll be able to see everything that you need to for the ad scheduling portion. To get started, I'm just gonna click into a single campaign. Let's use this one. And now to find the ad schedule, you just need to come over here in the left-hand navigation, come down to ad schedule. If you don't see it right off the bat, you'll notice that the show less has already been expanded. So it could be under this type of option here. So I'll just open that up, click ad schedule. And the first thing that shows up is going to be the ad schedule. Pretty simple, right? Now on every ad schedule page, you will see something that looks like this. There's going to be a chart up at the top that operates effectively like a heat map for whatever stat you have in place. And then you will see all of the day and time segmentations along with their respective performance down below. Basically what Google is trying to do is give you a really quick visual overview of how everything is performing. So you can see here that on Sundays from 12 PM to 6 PM, we have 3,600 clicks. If we come up here and highlight this section, we have the same number of clicks. So all the data in this chart corresponds to the table below. And you can view different data points. All these different options can be used in this heat map option. So if you wanted to see where your conversions were, you could also do that. And I promise it did change. It just is pretty similar to where the clicks were. This is an ad schedule that's already fleshed out and has some stats associated with it. But to show you how these work, I want to go to a campaign that doesn't have an ad schedule set up so we can tinker and it'll be a little bit easier to view. Since this campaign has had no ad schedule added, your ads are eligible to show all the time. If you do not set an ad schedule for your Google ads campaigns, it will default by running all hours of every day of the week. So effectively 24 seven and your table will look like this. There will be no heat map associated with the top and you'll have no line items down below but your ads can still run all the time. Now there are some reports where we can see performance that we'll get into a little bit, but if we do want to add an ad schedule, you can either come to edit or come up to this blue pencil here. The first thing you can do to edit your ad schedule is to decide whether or not you want to use a 24 or 12 hour clock. I'm an American and I'm not in the military. So we're going to keep using the 12 hour clock, but if the 24 hour clock suits you better, go ahead and use that. And that's also a good time to note that the hours that are being associated here are going to be the hours that are associated with the account. So you can see down here that this account is based on the Pacific time zone in the United States or GMT minus seven. So any ad schedule that you set up is going to run based on that time in the Pacific time zone. So if you're trying to make sure that you have ads on for a certain time on the East coast, you're going to need to adjust your ad schedule by three hours to make sure that people on the East Coast can see it when you want them to and can't see it when you don't want them to. Now we can start setting up the ad schedule itself. The builder is going to be very simple. The first thing you do is choose which days you want this to run. It'll default you to all days, but you can choose Monday to Friday, which are weekdays, Saturday to Sunday, weekends, or you can choose individual days, whichever makes the most sense for you based on what you're trying to target. For right now, I'm just gonna leave it as all days. And then next you choose the start time that you want it to run. So 12 a.m. is gonna be midnight and everything after that runs in 15 minute increments that you can have your ads running. Now, to my knowledge, Google ads does not promise that it will turn things on on the exact second that it becomes 12:15 a.m., but it will do it within the time period from 12:15 to 12:30, which for the vast majority of you, I would venture to say everybody is good enough. The next thing you do is choose your end time. So if you choose 12 a.m. to 12 a.m., that's effectively going to be midnight to midnight, which means all day. And if you wanted to leave it as this, if you click save, it's going to basically just revert to the exact same view it was. It's not gonna give you any data. So this is where ad scheduling strategy comes into play. Start to think about what days and times you see different spikes in performance that you wanna take advantage of. The most common one, and the one that I set up by default, as you'll see here in a little bit, is to segment performance by 
the very early morning hours, late morning, early afternoon, and evening. So if I were to do that for this account, I would set things up like this. My first block is gonna be that very early morning, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Then I'm going to add another run. Again, I'll leave it as all days, but then I'm gonna set the next set of times to be for the late morning, or effectively 6 a.m. to noon. I'm gonna continue the process for the afternoon, which will be noon to 6 p.m., and then also the evening, which will be 6 p.m. to midnight. Now that I have those set up, I can click Save. My ad schedule will look like this. As soon as this campaign starts running, start to accrue data down here, and then we'll have that heat map option up here at the top. But that's just a very basic overview of how all of these different pieces can work. You can customize it quite a bit more depending on what makes sense for your account. Let's remove a couple of these. If you wanted your ad schedule to have maybe Mondays through Fridays then, also are going to run from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., you can set that up pretty easily. You can also then set up individual ad schedules by anything as short as 15 minutes. I know I have it set at 6 a.m. I can set it at 6.15 a.m. and that will be just fine. There are only really two limitations when it comes to setting up your ad schedule. And let me get one set up real quick. Now I have an original ad schedule that is going to run effectively all hours of all days. And then I have another one that's gonna run from 3.15 a.m. to 5.45 a.m. on all days. If I come down here to save, you'll see that your ad schedules cannot overlap. So anytime you set up your ad schedules, they need to be of consecutive time. So you'll see here in this chart, it's gonna be 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. and then we pick up again at 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. You cannot have ad schedules where the two boxes overlap on the 6 a.m. hour. So that's the first limitation. And now let me set up the second. This is effectively just chaos, but I have Mondays to run from all sorts of different times. And I have eight different ad schedules that I wanna run on Mondays. For whatever reason, that's what speaks to me. So I go down to hit save, and now we have the second limitation. You've defined too many periods in one day. Each day can only be segmented into six different time periods. So if we do the math, 24 hour day, six time periods. If you wanted to have full coverage, you could use four hour blocks to cover 12 a.m. to 4 a.m., 4 a.m. to 8, 8 to noon, and then the same thing for the afternoon. And that would give you full coverage with the maximum amount of time periods if you want. But personally, I usually stick to the four segmentations of six hours because it does end up reflecting very early morning, morning while people may or may not be at work in a number of time zones, even though I'm highlighted over Sunday, afternoon when people are still potentially at work, and then late evening where people are usually at home with family, that sort of thing. That tends to work best for me, but based on the no overlapping ad schedule and the six segmentations per day, you can set up your ad schedule after that to whatever makes sense for you. For now, I'm just gonna clear this entire ad schedule and then I'm gonna hit save. Because a little peek behind the curtain, this campaign is paused. I don't actually need to make any changes to it. One thing I do wanna show you that's a little bit of a trick, it might've seemed very quick to set up that ad schedule because of the power of editing. Didn't seem like it took very long, but quite frankly, all that scrolling is really annoying in the ad interface. But the good news is that you can actually set up ad schedules in Google Ads Editor, and there's a little trick to do it in bulk. So we're in Editor, and I've narrowed it down to two campaigns in this account, one that has an ad schedule and the paused one that we know that I just showed you that doesn't. If we come up to the enabled campaign that has an ad schedule, all of the ad scheduling in Google Ads Editor lives at the campaign level. So you see I'm highlighted over campaigns. And then if I come over here, ad schedule is at 100%. Now you can edit this just by clicking the pencil and you'll see that it's set up exactly the same way as I would in the account. So I'm gonna click okay. If I wanted to, I could click the campaign that's paused, click the pencil, click add, and then I could adjust to all days, weekends, select individual days. I can then choose the start time with the then 15 minute increment afterward. And then the end time again with the 15 minute increment. And I could do that manually just like I can the interface. So if that's what you wanna do, that's great. And there's one thing I wanna call out before we use it. It's gonna be this little icon right here. It says paste. Currently it's grayed out, we can't paste anything. But the cool part is in Google Ads Editor, you can copy and paste an ad schedule from an existing campaign. So if we come over here and select the campaign that's currently active with an ad schedule, I can either use my keyboard shortcut to copy it, or just for sake of the video, I can right click and you can either click copy or copy shell, either one would be fine. So you can then come to the campaign that does not have an ad schedule. Now you'll see that that paste icon has opened up. So if we click paste, now you'll see that the ad schedule is 100%. If we come here, all of them are set up the exact same way as the other campaign. 
If you already have an ad schedule you want to carry over, this is the easiest way to do it. Even if you want it to be tweaked a little bit, you could then carry it over, then come to the edit section, and you could adjust it that way. That's how you set up ad schedules. Let's hop back into the account itself and start to talk about how I use them. I selected a different campaign that has a little bit spottier performance than the one that we looked at earlier that had data, because I want to show you how I take advantage of this data with everything broken out. Now, as you can see, this campaign runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but that doesn't mean that I can't lean into performance trends. So depending on what type of person you are, you can either use the heat map chart up here, or you can use the data table below to try and find patterns in performance. Personally, I'm always curious where our conversions come from. So right now we're on clicks. Let's adjust this to be conversions. Now you can see that in this campaign, most of them usually come in the afternoon and the early morning hours and evening hours, not quite so much. So just as a spot check, this could be an easy takeaway for me to start talking to my client about either strategies to improve marketing during these hours, or maybe we look to turn those off. But the easiest option is gonna to be to start leveraging bid modifiers. So again, down here, we can see the table for the exact same performance. We can see that Thursdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, all of these have really high cost per conversion. Now the average cost per conversion for this campaign is about $59 during this time period. So if I wanted to, I could set up a filter for the cost per conversion and anything over maybe double that, we'll say 120, narrows down to those three options, even the table up above filters for it. I could then check the box here, edit, change the bid adjustment. And I can decrease by maybe 10% to start. Now I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna clear this blue bar. I'm gonna clear this filter because now we can see in the table below, these three time periods have a negative 10% bid adjustment, meaning if my bid during these times is $10, I will instead be only bidding $9 for these options, but all other segments will stay at $10. At a glance, it's also really easy to see when there are bid modifiers because the different time periods that we have them have this yellow bar on them. So it makes it really easy to identify where you have bid modifiers in place. There's no adjustment for whether it's a positive or negative, but only that it shows up in that table above. At this point, I'm still optimizing off of those preset six hour buckets that I set for every day, but you can still see performance for each individual day and hour. You can use these different reports over here. So you can choose day. Now it'll show you the performance for the day of the week for this campaign over the time period that you have. You can also review the performance by hour. And then if you wanna get really granular with it, you can actually look at day and hour where you're going to get the days and hours. So you can see Saturday from 7 to 8 p.m., Saturday from 6 to 7 p.m., Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can find all of these different breakdowns in performance for you to review. And I like to review these probably once a quarter to see how performance trends are carrying over. If I notice that there are some patterns that break out of my default six hour buckets for each day, I might go back and adjust my ad schedule. That way I can take advantage of it. For example, these two time periods are back to back, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and then 7 to 8 p.m. on Saturdays. If for whatever reason I find that that two hour period is just terrible compared to the rest of Saturday or going gangbusters compared to the rest of Saturday, I can adjust my ad schedule to focus on just that two hour period on Saturdays, leave the rest of the day mostly within the same buckets, but then I can really lean into that individual time period to either increase or decrease my bids accordingly. Now, the one caveat to all of the strategies that I've talked about in this video is based on the bidding strategy that you're using for your campaigns. This entire account runs on manual CPC because that's what has been performing best, but ad scheduling and bid modifiers work differently for smart bidding. When you use automated bidding, the modifiers that you can associate with ad scheduling will only be applied and paid attention to with maximized clicks. So the incremental 10% increases or decreases that I've talked about in this video will not apply to campaigns that use target impression share, target CPA, target ROAS, maximize conversions, or max conversion value. But that doesn't mean that your ads have to run every day, all hours of the day. Let's hop into a different account real quick. And here you can see this first campaign in the list. The bid strategy type is target CPA. So one of those smart bidding strategies. Let's click into that real quick and now head to the ad schedule. This is the only way that ad schedules are paid attention to for smart bidding strategies. If you only have your ads activated for certain times and days, they will run during those times and not during others. So the editor for this, Mondays to Fridays, 
7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Those are the only times they want it to run, and that's it. Now I could make different time periods for 7 a.m. to noon, noon to 5 p.m., 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., and it would break them down into individual buckets, and it would still run during the same time periods, and it would give me further insight into performance, but the biggest piece is that it's not going to pay attention to any bid modifiers that I put in place or bid adjustments. One thing that I think is a little bit cruel is you'll notice this column is still here, this pencil is still set up, and I can still write in any number that I want here. I can click save and it'll save it. It'll have this little yellow bar up here, but that didn't actually do anything. So don't get too excited if you hop into an account with campaigns using smart bidding strategies and seeing the bid adjustment there and thinking that it's working. It's not doing anything, it's just ignoring it. But if you were to switch your campaign to manual bidding, or if you'll remember, the only bidding strategy that pays attention to ad scheduling is maximize clicks. So if you were to switch your campaign to that, it would honor any bid adjustment you've put in place. So it's a word of caution to one, don't get too excited about these bid adjustments because they're not doing anything in smart bidding strategies. But if you shift away from smart bidding strategies, don't forget that these bid adjustments are in here and could impact your performance quite a bit, especially if you tried to get cute with it while recording a video for YouTube and forgot to take it off. Now, while it is kind of a bummer that you don't have bid adjustment control with smart bidding strategies, Google says that they take ad schedule performance into account. That's one of the many variables they pay attention to when dynamically choosing your bid with that smart bidding strategy. So it is being accounted for, you just can't see it. But the other part is if your account has high enough volume, you can adjust campaigns to take advantage of some ad schedule tweaks. Maybe you notice that weekends versus weekdays are quite a bit different. You could set up separate campaigns for weekends versus weekdays, have one use an automated bidding strategy, maybe with a target CPA of $100, and the other one use a target CPA of $200. You can do that, but again, you'd need to make sure that you have enough volume to be able to support two separate campaigns and two separate bid strategies. If nothing else, I'm a big fan of setting up broken out ad schedules to at least be able to see insights into performance for different days of the week and times of the day, even if you're using an automated bid strategy that doesn't allow you to make bid adjustments based on them. If you have any additional questions about ad scheduling or strategies around that in Google Ads, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.